Yesterday, it was revealed that the FBI is investigating the current Democrat occupier of the Oval Office for taking criminal bribes and selling out our nation to foreign nationals. We also learned that there are more of the same kind of investigations underway against Joe Biden. Yet, that wasn't the top story. The turncoat press, the Democrats, and the vile never-Trumpers instead focused on the stories surrounding the man who isn't making any decisions, abusing our citizens and eroding our rights. Someone who isn't even in political office, President Trump. Another time for choosing. That's our focus in today's preamble. We all remember Ronald Reagan's first time for choosing speech. He challenged America to beat back the left-wing Marxist forces that threatened to bring down our nation in the 1960s. Thankfully, our nation back then chose well. Now we're all on the precipice of having to choose once again. Once the FBI finally stopped interfering in a congressional investigation, we learned that Joe Biden is being investigated for a criminal influence peddling scheme tied to payments reportedly made by the Ukrainian energy company Burisma to members of the Biden family. Disgraced FBI director Christopher Wray decided to stop interfering with the congressional investigation under the threat of being held in contempt of Congress after he repeatedly refused to comply with a lawful subpoena. Ray allowed members of the Oversight Committee to review the unclassified FBI-generated FD-1023 document regarding Joe Biden's purported lawbreaking. The FBI conducted the briefing in a skiff. This was designed to con stupid people into believing that the document was somehow secret or sensitive. Indeed, mindless left-wingers are online today saying that placing a document in a skiff makes it classified so if I was to share Grandma Jean's sweet potato recipe in a skiff, mindless left-wingers would claim, it's classified, it's classified. Needless to say, that's not how it works, kids. We also learned that other classified, unclassified FD-1023 reports exist on other alleged criminal activity undertaken by Joe Biden. The FBI has been working hard to hide this information from our people at this point. I should note that it took a contempt of Congress threat against Christopher Wray to get him to stop interfering with a congressional investigation. I'm wondering out loud, what's it going to take to get the FBI and DOJ to stop interfering with our elections? But I digress. So, as this information is breaking, as if by magic, the Biden regime announces an indictment of former President Trump. And quickly, that news becomes... The top story. Every news agency that made the editorial decisions to make an indictment of a former president a bigger story than the mountains of criminal and unethical, ethical behavior of the current occupier of the Oval Office, those pretend news agencies are the definition of narrative over news. And we can excuse the vast majority of Democrats in the newsrooms and on Twitter. They are never honest. They are always unfair. Thus always un-American. But some reactions from the left, and I have to stress some, well, they just might surprise you. I'm not so sure that these investigations uh, aren't done in a way that winds up intentionally or unintentionally helping uh, the former president, to be honest, because every time there's a swing, it seems to expose the fact that they go after him with what seems to be at or below a level of anything that would be impressive to people reviewing the documents. What's your take on this? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously not a fan of Donald Trump. I wrote a book about the, the guy called Insane Clown President. Um, but, you know, my feeling is if you're going to take the very extreme step of uh, indicting somebody who is the likely nominee of the opposition party, uh, the, the, the charge has to meet two tests. It has to be extremely serious and it has to be an airtight case. And I think both of these cases fail uh, on both of those points. Oh, yes, they do. Now, those are dedicated men to the left, my friends. And they deserve credit for seeing what we conservatives have been shouting for years, that the Marxists who dominate the Biden regime in permanent Washington pose an existential threat to and are the antithesis of our Republican democracy. But as some on the left wake up to the irreparable damage being done by a government weaponized against its people and the America first mindset, the never-Trumpers prove that their hatred of President Trump far exceeds their intelligence and alleged love of country. 
rejected Congressman Adam Crying Kinsinger took to Twitter, validating the weaponization of government against political enemies by buying into this corruption, saying President Trump should withdraw from the race. And former Republican turned woke champion Joe Walsh, in typical left-wing fashion, attacked all of you who want equal treatment under the law, a robust national security, and a Republican Party that actually opposes Democrats from time to time, their perversion, their Marxism, and lawlessness. Mr. Walsh calling every one of you who doesn't agree with him a cultist. Like the press, Mr. Walsh couldn't care less about the harm being dished out to our people by the Biden regime. He just thinks orange man bad is the only policy pronouncement anyone needs. By destroying American norms, the Constitution and the rule of law, the Democrats have crossed the Rubicon. For the first time in our history, the leftist party is using the enormous power of the state to take out their political challengers in order to maintain their grip on power, and in so doing, deny you a choice in how your country is run. There's a word for that. Tyranny. And for real Americans, there really is no choice between freedom and tyranny. Consider that the Durham report revealed that the FBI had evidence of crimes committed by Hillary Clinton, but the DOJ and FBI protected her, then launched an investigation against President Trump with no evidence. Consider that President Trump was impeached for allegedly threatening to withhold congressionally approved funding from Ukraine, which he never did. But Joe Biden made that threat. He said, unless Ukraine fired the prosecutor investigating his cokehead son's company, Burisma, oh, there's that name again, Biden was going to deny congressionally approved funding. I said, I'm telling you, you're not getting the billion dollars. I said, you're not getting the billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Yeah, $1.2 billion to be exact. So Biden not impeached. Trump was impeached, even though transcripts, transcripts showed that Trump did nothing wrong. The video shows Biden did. Joe Biden has admitted that he has been in possession of classified documents dating back to 1974 that he stored in his home, his garage, and in a building bought and paid for by communist China. Now, everybody knows, except for the media, the Justice Department, and never Trumpers, that senators and vice presidents cannot declassify documents. Yet they look the other way. Instead, President Trump, who had the power to declassify documents, is indicted. Here is a document, a signed letter from President Trump on January 19th, 2021, the day before he left office, declassifying crossfire hurricane documents. These documents reportedly showed Obama, Biden, the CIA, DOJ, and FBI spied on President Trump. Is this why our corrupt government raided Mar-a-Lago? Has this all been an effort by Democrats and never Trumpers to steal and bury evidence of their alleged crimes? It appears so. So to review, Hillary guilty, Trump investigated, Biden guilty, Trump impeached, Biden guilty again, Trump indicted. Anybody else out there seeing a pattern? So now it's up to you to decide. Where do you stand? That's a fine question for the timid class inside the GOP. And it's also a fine question for the GOP primary presidential candidates as well. Joining me now to discuss is Tennessee Congressman Tim Burchett. He sits on the House Oversight Committee and Foreign Affairs Committee. Congressman, it's good to see you, sir. Trump is facing multiple charges. Meanwhile, the FBI is not held accountable for launching crossfire hurricane, burying the Hunter Biden laptop, refusing to comply with a lawful GOP subpoena. Congressman, it seems no one is, is above the law except those trying to destroy one of the few Republicans who actually believes that Democrats have earned opposition. Why do so many in your party refuse to do anything substantial to end this two-tiered justice system? They're gutless. That's it. They're gutless. They don't have the guts. You want to expand on that? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, wait. It, Congress is the purse of of the of, of this country, and we need to exercise that. All these groups that just keep it, they weaponize themselves. You know, it's it, President Biden has over. He has actually one thousand eight hundred and fifty boxes of files from 
from Delaware to Chinatown. I mean, just go through it. it it's ridiculous. This is a complete weaponization. These these are just thugs that are going after President Trump. Now, granted, he's not perfect. Um, and that's, you know, he shouldn't have had the files. I get that. But neither should Clinton, neither should Reagan, neither should either Bush, neither should uh, Obama, and definitely not, not, not Biden. But they all do, and they all have. And we've, you know, we go through this time and time again. What was the intent? And the intent was not to subvert justice. But if you go back to uh, President Biden and when he was vice president, there's 10 million reasons why we ought to be curious about what the heck's going on with the Biden crime family. You know, during um, during mob school, I think the Bidens were asleep during um, money laundering class because it, 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 for, with Tim Burch, it can figure it out. I can't figure out why the Justice Department has been sitting on this for five years. And then the bribery of the vice president, that the, that so-called investigation that's been, uh, you know, brushed under the rug. This thing is just ridiculous. The American public deserves better. And I'll tell you something else. The national media, so-called national media, that is losing ground. And the reason folks like yourself, ratings are going through the roof is because they continue to hide this. They own this guy. They invested their time and money to get this guy elected, a guy that can't pour water out of a boot if the instructions were written on the hill. And Dad, they own him. So now they're stuck with him, <laughs> and we need something to happen. Congressman, the Department of Injustice indicted Trump the same day the Oversight Committee reviewed the bombshell evidence of Biden accepting $5 million in a massive influence peddling scheme involving his son's one-time employer, the Ukrainian company Burisma. Marjorie Taylor Greene exposing the alleged bribery scheme, scheme on Newsmax with me last night. Watch. The FBI's top paid uh, informant that they say is very credible, that Joe Biden was involved in pay-to-play schemes in Ukraine involving, involving Burisma. And it says in very clear detail that Joe Biden was paid $5 million and Hunter Biden was paid $5 million to get the work done, to get Victor Shokin, the prosecutor, fired and stop him from investigating Burisma. Congressman, we also learned that Biden has other FD-1023 forms pertaining to other alleged crimes. Democrats have rediscovered that a sitting president can't be indicted, uh, something that they wanted to forget when President Trump was in the Oval Office. The only remedy is impeachment, sir. Speaker McCarthy took that option off the table. With these new revelations, do you think it's back on the table, sir? I think it is. I mean, I don't think it should have ever been taken off the table. This is ridiculous. This is how much farther is this going? I mean, we know of the $10 million that these Chinese corporations pumped into the Bidens. You wonder why a, a Chinese balloon of 1800s technology could fly uh, over the entire continental United States and, and be able to view our missile sites or secret sites, or Oak Ridge National Laboratory, Fort Campbell, Kentucky. And then we wait because of safety to knock it down off the coast of Myrtle Beach. Heck, when it was in Montana, they should have knocked it down. They should have knocked it down to the Aleutian Islands. You're more likely to hit some guy with a mullet haircut and a tie-dyed muscle shirt off the coast of Myrtle Beach than you are to hit anybody in the Aleutian <laughs> Islands or in Montana. You know, we're, we're corrupted from top to bottom. Folks better realize, brother, they better realize Washington, D.C. is a trash can, and everybody wants to pick and choose. Man, we need to turn this thing upside down with a dadgum fire hose and clean it out top to bottom from our military to our yes, learning sir. institute to our Justice Department. It's, it's just top to bottom. We've been corrupted and we are losing our country. And the bad thing is we're not, they're not taking it. We're giving it to them. When 20 million folks yes, sir. De decline to go to the polls and vote, this is what happens. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, we might want to explore where you started this conversation, sir. We shouldn't be funding our own destruction. We sh American taxpayers should not be funding the destruction of, of the American Constitution. Congressman Tim Burchett, thank you very much, sir. We appreciate your time.